We're going to go through replicator dynamics in Python. Uh, replicator dynamics is a subset of evolutionary game theory and basically shows how a population changes through time. Here we're going to import all the relevant packages, importantly NashPy, and then we're going to create a game given this payoff matrix. Uh, this game will be for your two types, type A and B, and then we're going to set their initial frequencies to be 0.2 and 0.8. Um, here we're creating the game and then here we're creating the timeline for the game. So this will show how the population changes through time uh, given the starting frequencies. So we'll run this and then we'll plot this to see how it changes. So you can see that type A and type B change through time and they both eventually converge to B.5. And uh, so this is pretty cool. This shows that there is a stable equilibrium for this population. And uh, that's where each type is uh, 0.5, in, 0.5 of the population um, or percent, 50% of the population is type A and type B. And so this is in, cool because it shows there's a stable equilibrium. If there wasn't a stable equilibrium, we would see an oscillation happening between uh, the types. Uh, so this is cool, but what if we want to see with three types? So here we're setting um, a different payoff matrix. Before it was a two by two, now it's a three by three, and that's just because we have three types. We're going to create the game again, and then we're going to uh, set the starting frequencies of each type. And then here we're going to create the timeline again. So we're going to run this and then plot it. Here we can see Again, that this uh, population has a stable equilibrium, so it doesn't oscillate. Uh, we can see that type B dominates and then type C kind of stays consistent and then type A actually goes extinct. And so that's pretty cool too. Another way of visualizing this would be to use this other package and we can, in, we can uh, insert the same payoff matrix as before and let's just see what it gives us. So this plot is basically saying that any point on this triangle has three values. It has frequency values for uh, type A, type B, and type C, or type X, Y, and Z here. So um, starting here, we have three different frequency values for the population. And the arrows tell us where that population frequencies are going to go. So starting here, we can see the trends of the population through time. And these, uh, the color in this triangle is showing how fast that change is actually happening. So when it's red, it's happening really fast. When it's blue, it's happening slowly. And um, this this uh, black dotted line on this edge is showing that this edge is actually its own equilibrium. So any point on this edge is an equilibrium. And we can see that if we're inside the triangle, we'll, we'll actually converge to this edge. Here we're, we're showing um, a semi-stable equilibrium with a gray circle. If it's a black circle, it's a stable equilibrium. If it's a white circle, it's a unstable equilibrium. So that's pretty cool. But this, this package actually doesn't allow you to incorporate mutations for each type. So this is what the next part of this will be. So here, we're going to use the NashPy uh, package again. We're going to use the same payoff matrix as before. We're going to make the same game. Uh, we're going to set the frequency values the initial frequency values, and then we're going to assign mutation probabilities for each type. So here we have a type A. Um, it has a probability one of staying the same or mutating into itself. It has probabilities zero for changing into type B or C. And then here we can see for type B, we have a one third probability of changing into type A a one-third probability of change or staying the same, and then one-third probability ch of changing into type C, and then the same uh, reasoning goes for type C.
So this was the hardest part. NashPy does not include how to change um, how uh, to account for mutations with three types in a population. It shows how to do it with two types. And so basically you have to make this into a, a matrix and then assign it into this replicator dynamics function. And so everything else is the same, but we have this new mutation stuff. So when we run this, we can we expect to have a different graph than before, and we do. This is cool. We can't really see if there is an equilibrium happening. We can see that it obviously doesn't oscillate, but um, we don't see it sort of uh, plateauing or uh, get like staying the same. And so we could have extended this to be more than a thousand time units, and then maybe we would see that. But we do see uh, a pretty clear difference than over here. And that's because the populations have the chance to mutate into each other. So that's a little overview of how to do replicator dynamics in Python. And yeah, thanks.